Hello, this is Mr. Buffington. We're going to look at quadrilaterals today. Yeah, they're a little bit square, but some of them are anyway. We're going to talk about quadrilaterals and um, talk about how some of them relate to each other. Um, first off, a quadrilateral is any four-sided polygon. So you can see some examples here of four-sided polygons. And these are mainly the ones that we're going to be talking about, the ones that you see on the board here. All right. First off, a trapezoid is a quadrilateral with exactly one pair of parallel sides. So it only has one set of parallel sides. You can see them here. Those are the two parallel sides of this one. And this one marked, sort of indicated with those green arrows, those two lines would be parallel to each other. A parallelogram is a quadrilateral with two pairs of parallel sides. It usually looks like this. Um, it's kind of off kilter a little bit, right? No 90 degree angles. It looks like a, I mean, maybe a rectangle that's kind of falling over or something. But this line is parallel to this line, and then the top and bottom are also parallel. There are several different parallelograms or different types of parallelograms, different categories of parallelograms, different quadrilaterals that are parallelograms and have special characteristics that make them um, even more refined in their actual category. Let's take a look at these. All right. Remember, quadrilaterals with parallel with two sets of parallel sides are called parallelograms. So a rectangle is a parallelogram. It has parallel sides. See, the top and bottom of this one are parallel. The sides are parallel. So that makes a rectangle a parallelogram. It's a special kind of parallelogram because it has four right angles. All right? So the angles inside there are all 90 degrees. But it's a parallelogram with four right angles. Another kind of parallelogram is a square. And a square not only has four right angles, like a, like a rectangle, but all sides are congruent. So we kind of like a parallelogram is any four-sided figure with parallel, both sides being parallel, two pairs of parallel lines. A rectangle is a kind of parallelogram with all angles being 90 degrees. And a square is a kind of rectangle where all the sides are the same. So we're kind of building on each other. And hopefully, that doesn't get too confusing. Um, there's one more type of parallelogram that we're going to talk about, and that is a rhombus. A rhombus is a parallelogram with four congruent sides. All right? So you'll see here this side, this side, this side, and this side are all congruent. They're the same measurement. All right? And both sides, um, you know, this side is parallel to this side, and this one's parallel to this one. So because it has two sets of parallel lines, and it has um, all four sides being equal, a square is a kind of rhombus. But it's not, but every kind of rhombus, most rhombi look like this. All right? They're kind of a little bit off kilter. They usually don't have all 90 degree angles. So it's a little bit different. Um, but it is a special kind of parallelogram where all four sides are congruent. All right, let's do a quick check of our understanding of these parallelograms. Um, first off, a rhombus is a type of parallelogram. So we can say that all rhombi are parallelograms. But what we can't say is all parallelograms are rhombi. We've looked at that pretty clearly so far. But just to, just to be absolutely clear, a rhombus is a parallelogram, both sides you know, two sets of parallel sides. Every single rhombi, every single rhombus is a parallelogram. All rhombi are parallelograms. But there are so many different types of parallelograms that are not rhombi. Right? Another um, question type that you might see is to remember the properties of a rhombus. All sides are parallel. All sides are the same length. All right, not all sides are parallel, but there's two sets of parallel sides, and then all sides are the same length. Okay? So is a square a type of rhombus? Yeah, a square, 
the sides are parallel and the sides are the same length, right? So a square is a rhombus. In fact, every square is a rhombus. But are all rhombi squares? No, there's several different types of rhombi that are not squares. And so, the, again, these questions are the types that you'll typically see on, um, on examinations and tests and things like that. I like to throw the types of questions in there where they, they make you think about the properties of the different quadrilaterals. Um, one more of that type, um, remember the properties of a rectangle. The sides are parallel, right, two sets of parallel sides, and all angles are 90 degrees. So are all squares rectangles? Think about the um, think about the um, properties of a square and the properties of a rectangle. Yeah, all squares are rectangles because all squares have parallel sides and 90 degree angles. But are, are all rectangles squares? No, they're not. Because some rectangles have different length sides. So that's basically um, again kind of an idea. Now, <clears throat> here is a diagram. It's like a Venn diagram only with quadrilaterals. I put this together and thought it was pretty clever. Um, this outside one represents all quadrilaterals. And all of these, parallelogram, rectangle, square rhombus, and trapezoid, all fit into that category. Quadrilateral is all four-sided polygons. Inside that category, we have trapezoid that's kind of off by itself. It's not, it's not really connected to anything else. And then we have a parallelogram. Notice I made that pretty big. Because rectangle, square, and rhombus all fit into the category of parallelogram. They're a parallelogram and they're a quadrilateral. And a rectangle is a parallelogram and a quadrilateral. And then you go even farther. A square is a type of rectangle. It's also a type of parallelogram and a quadrilateral. Now, rhombus is over here. It is a parallelogram. And a square, remember, is a type of rhombus as well. So we could have had a little square inside there as well um, to sort of give us an idea, kind of a visual way of thinking about this. So remember the properties of these quadrilaterals, and then remember how they relate to each other.